Monday, November 3rd. It was an exhausting weekend of sports, and now it's back to work on Monday, <laughs> November 3rd, and it's, can't remember, close to 9 a.m., losing track of the time, 47 degrees, a brisk morning in New England, but without much wind. Got a fairly audible work boat heading off to work on this Monday morning. And out the window this morning with a, a warm cup of coffee, a beautiful, freshly mowed, freshly frosted lawn here facing Mount Mansfield in Stowe, Vermont. Thank you, Donner and Carl, for the beautiful. Are you going sledding on your lawn today? The temperatures this morning were cold. Uh, it was relatively light wind overnight, and a lot of places had a clear sky. That's radiational cooling. There is the temperatures, 20s, it was about 25 in Montpelier. And it was actually a little warmer up on Mount Washington. So look at the Mount Washington profile this morning. 28 and a half degrees at the base and the summit and close to 40 at 4,000 feet. So an inversion and we have warm air advection today with a strong storm going across central Canada and a warm front, cold front combination coming at us from the west. But there's also cyclogenesis. We're going to have a bomb cyclone, a bomb cyclogenesis over the next 36 hours that is mostly just a miss in New England. So the surface map this morning showed our old high pressure system has moved off to the right. And there's a low, you can't even see it. You can see the isobars, but the center of the low up around Hudson Bay is around 985 millibars. That's a powerhouse. And then you have a weak low off of North Carolina, and that's a, what about a 10, 10 millibar? And notice the fronts, they are off Florida. There's one front south of Miami, and there's another front over the Bahamas. So now if we look at that from space, I call it the triple stream. We've got the one coming out of Canada, which is polar, borderline Arctic. And then you've got the, the low that's off North Carolina, and you can see another pulse of energy there, pure tropical air east of the Bahamas, and these three energy centers are going to phase and resonate, and a deepening wave turns into cyclogenesis, which turns into bombogenesis. Yesterday I showed it using the future radar and the isobars. Well, this time I'm gonna use the wind forecast. So this low pressure system, is going to deepen. This is the Northwest Atlantic, and the, the purple is wind sustained at 25. These are sustained winds, and now here's our low going well south of Nantucket. Now, today with a low to our north, the wind would want to come in from the south, but with a low south of Nantucket, the wind would want to come in from the north, so they're competing, so it's not too windy today. However, they are going to phase and deepen, and here comes your bomb cyclone with the central pressure having moved from 10,010 10 millibars Two, let's stop it now at tomorrow, 24 hours later, let's call it uh, 1 p.m. Pretty sure it was 1 p.m., 18Z. And that's 945 millibars or so. And that's a deepening of 65 millibars or so in 24 hours or so. That is definitely bombogenesis. And then put the cursor over. Uh, sorry, put the cursor over just south of that low, which is just south of Newfoundland, and that says 80 knots, sustained wind on the south side of this system, and in the New England area on the coast, our wind is sustained at 20 to 25. It's going to become much more windy tomorrow. All right, so that's the perspective on our bomb cyclone. I'm undo Steve here from his tangle, because they always have to wrap around whatever they can find to wrap themselves around. And now I want to continue that wind forecast because the storms are all lined up. Should have shown the big satellite. I'll show it in a minute. And uh, here's the next one coming in. So the wind lets up a little bit now on Wednesday. It's not too windy. It's a fairly nice day. And then the wind is going to ramp up again from the south on Wednesday night. And then Thursday morning at 7 a.m. We're going to stop it again. We're going to put the cursor right over the water just east of Coast Guard Beach off of the Cape Cod National Seashore and it's sustained wind of close to 40 knots. So it's gonna be very windy on the backside of that 983 millibar low. It's a clipper that's gonna be deepening rapidly as it comes over New England on Wednesday night and Thursday morning. And then both of these things are gonna have rain and snow 
So I guess I should show the, uh, all my friends want to see the snow accumulations with this system. And I think I'm gonna show this QPF first. So I uh, just dribbed some drabs of rain coming at us from the south and east, uh, from the south and west uh, this morning in this afternoon in southeastern New England, that's the ocean storm. And then from the northwest, that's the cold front that's coming at us, which is gonna be warm enough for rain up to just about 5,000 feet. So uh, the mountains are gonna get rain initially, except for the top of Mount Washington. And then it's gonna to change to snow as the storm goes by. Look at that in a minute. And so you have the stripes of weather coming at us from the west and the north. And you also have the stripes of weather coming at us from the south. And if you stop the maps, well, this stops by itself at uh, 60 hours uh, to H triple R. Precipitation will have been ended by tomorrow afternoon. And we will have the cursor over South Dennis. Why not? Bass River, Jeff Mers. You're going to get maybe, if the HRRR is correct, a half inch of rain. So Cape Cod, once again, may get more rain than Boston and Worcester. And then if you look up at the mountains, some of those yellows there around Mount Washington, that could be two or three inches of not just rain. There's going to be snow with it. So here's the snow forecast. <laughs> Who wants to go hiking again? Maybe Killington will open in the next couple of days. So you don't see too much snow, do you? Uh, not in Vermont, because the system is going to be getting stronger as it goes by. So you're actually going to get more snow. Cannon Mountain may get more snow than Killington from this with that northerly wind, Cannon effect, and uh, Wildcat area. And uh, Mount Washington probably comes in with a good solid eight inches of snow, Beck, if you're listening. And uh, put the cursor over Cranmore, though, to be fair. No, Wildcat, Wildcat, Wildcat. Below, uh, say, maybe... 3,000 feet. I think we landed that cursor at about three inches, about halfway up Wildcat. And I think that's a general good estimate. <laughs> Am I right, Josh? <laughs> Should I take the over on this? I'll tell you what, it's a lot colder than the last week's storm and it's a lot less stable. It's a lot more unstable. So I think we should take the over on the snowfall forecast. This is just the next 48 hours, by the way. Uh, there's another one coming at us. And if I show the really big picture after we take a time out for people not at work, unless dog walking is work. Sometimes dog walking is work. And the moorings, the mooring balls are being collected. Maybe I'll make a time lapse of you guys going through here. Only one moored boat left out there. Why are your fenders off? And so they're going to collect all these moorings today. So I'll be watching that. Get some debris. We got some debris floating in the water. Hmm, we got a high tide this week. Most of our storms, though, are going to have offshore winds. It's going to be very windy this week. Oh, yeah, I wanted to finish that, yeah, I already did. I finished that uh, Northwest Atlantic wind forecast, right? What else did I want to show? The big picture uh, satellite. That's what you were going to show, Tim. And this is from north of Hawaii. I see one, two, three. Uh, you have to look carefully. Get into the southwestern United States. Four cyclones uh, coming off the Pacific and into the western uh, states of the United States. And then we have the one across Canada, five. And then the one off southeastern United States, six. And then the remnant of Tropical Storm Melissa about to barrel into the United Kingdom. Seven distinct cyclones, at least. And I could probably find a few more embedded in there. So a parade of storms. And like I said, the Arctic air is coming to our side of the North Pole in Canada. And it's really warm this week in uh, parts of the deep south around Texas is going to be fueling us with heat from the south and cold from the north. And that means this parade of storms is really going to raise a ruckus for us. And so now let's go to the Euro and watch the parade of serpentine cyclones, and you can't really see it anymore as this one that's happening today goes off the map. And then uh, the low well to our north and uh, uh, redevelopment uh, pretty close to uh, Nova Scotia it brings in the wind from the north and the upslope precipitation. Any green will have changed to blue and ending tomorrow afternoon. And then on Wednesday, high pressure to our south. When these cold highs go to our south, we warm up fairly quickly because the wind comes around from the west and it's an offshore wind. But here comes another clipper. It's coming in Wednesday night and Thursday. And the trend on this guidance has been to shift this thing a little further south and a little stronger. So this is going to be a really powerful clipper, about as powerful as they get as they slow it down here. Arctic air to the north with that 510 blue line way up near uh, the top of the map. And you have the 980 three millibar low going off the Gulf of Maine and wicked winds from the north coming in here as rain ends as snow. Again, a few inches of snow and maybe the plows come out at lower elevations from north of Lincoln, New Hampshire up to about Jackman, Maine may end up with a foot of snow from that one. So is it deer hunting season? Whitey, are you up there looking for prints in the snow? They could be there. And then Friday, uh, we get the, the wind relaxing after a very windy Thursday. And then here comes a, 
Uh, Saturday looks okay. What, this is going to be like the 18th and 19th dry Saturday in Cape Cod. If this is right, the front's going to come in on Sunday. And with low going to our north, uh, that almost guarantees that we're going to get mostly rain on Sunday night into Monday with some thunderstorms possible. Uh, this guidance has been fairly consistent, so it's fairly believable. And then here's where I've been uh, trying to uh, wish cast a, a Veterans Day snowstorm for us. And now Veterans Day is Tuesday, November 11th. And I'm going to stop it here at, uh, let's see, 0Z Wednesday the 12th, minus 5. We're five hours ahead of Zulu or Greenwich time. So that's 7 p.m. now on Tuesday, November 11th, Veterans Day, and there is a storm out there. It's about a 998, and you see the, the let's see, 540, 534, 528, 522. Is that the 516 blue cutoff upper level low? That is borderline wayward polar vortex over Albany, New York, with a storm out over the ocean. It did not adjust west and north as I was thinking yesterday, but I'm not giving up on that. How often do we see this? Oh, it's going to miss out to sea in uh, 10 days, and then we end up having it go up the St. Lawrence River Valley. But uh, it shows a lot of cold around here, and that's all ocean effect precipitation south of New England. And you didn't really see it, but there's another storm coming off the Pacific Ocean on the, on the far left-hand side of the map. There, I'll show it again. There's another Pacific storm coming in. And there's a warm wave, though, coming across the Rockies. So after that upper level low and close to record cold on the 11th and 12th, uh, would probably have a rebound of pretty warm air coming in around mid-month, which would be followed again by another wave of colder air, because that's how weather works and weather forecasts work. Oh, we do. We still have herons here. I just opened my eyes and there was a heron flying by. Because in the end more, which we're going to see in a second, watching the Patriots, it was a fun game, but <laughs> it wasn't an easy one, was it? And then I went over to Quincy and I f saw some big tracks in the sand, and I was wondering what those tracks could be. And let me know if you're a track expert, if it was a heron. Oh, yes, and I'm thinking of some of my experts. Uh, Nantucket, Martin, do you still watch? Are you still here? And Bruce Cowan, you made the front page. You were in my inbox this morning as the Nantucket Current sends out their newsletters every, what is it, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And today is the first day for commercial scallop season in Nantucket and in the harbor. Bay scallops are the best. And there's Bruce from uh, the end of the 23-24 season. And... He said, uh, well, the article said that last year we had the most scallops harvested since about 2016 and 17. So how's this year going to do? I love bay scallops. I want to come down there, Bruce, and go out with you one day. We made a good video together uh, about 15 years ago going scalloping. All right. So that's going to be the end more. Well, I'm not going to have scalloping in the end more. I'm just watching this log float by. I wouldn't want to run into that in my boat. Hey, you guys. There's a, there's a big hunk of... Float some over here. Can you come get this? All right. I'm going to make a time lapse of you guys too, as uh, I love to do that. So here's yesterday's weather today. There's Steve and T Rex, and the rain bucket is full. And more. And more. 11.42 a.m., formerly known as 12.42 p.m. <laughs> and uh, I'm grateful for the extra hour. Really needed it after that exciting. World Series, and I consider weather like a sporting event, and I love to call the play-by-play -play with sailors heading into the wind here on our Not In A Hurry Sunday. And Patriots are on in a few minutes over there. And grateful for the sun this morning, but I'm gonna miss it at five o'clock. <laughs> uh, time to start going to bed a lot earlier and getting up earlier. And more and more and more. End of the first quarter. T Rex has to go for a little walk. He can't wait. We'll use the Patriots leash. Uh, Atlanta made a nice little drive there to tie it up there at the end of the first quarter. Now, a serious question, T Rex. Can you just go out slowly? It's not in a hurry Sunday. Stop. So, what is the time period between pumpkins get put into compost and Christmas lights go up? Do they overlap? Maybe wait for the mums to dry out a little bit. But, wow, gorgeous, especially on the south side of the house in the sun. Wonderful day for football and walking a T-Rex. The euonymus leaves coming down over there. Let's check out the euonymus leaves in my backyard. That thing's not doing so well. 
that stand. Even though we lost one huge tree right there over the summer, there's still plenty of leaves down here on the ground. And yes, I do bring neighborhood leaves down to go into the worm farm adjacent to the Euonymus. Eh, you don't want any of that. And Montauk daisies, tomatoes all blending. Uh, sad to see the end of the gardening season. First half did not end <laughs> as we expected. Uh, Patriots were pulling away, but then there was a fumble, and now it's a one touchdown game. So that's cool. We're out in the backyard here. Feels like closer to four than before three, but that's how it works now that we're in Eastern Standard Time. Happy to see that the Montauk daisies held on into November. At least several of them did. My Euonymus, you know, if you've been watching along, it's been a rough year for the Euonymus. Had the tomatoes grow up the Euonymus. And we're not snow skiing. I like lift served skiing, so I'm not snow skiing until November 22nd, I don't think. See you at the Forerunner or Sunrise Six Pack, eight o'clock on that Saturday before Thanksgiving. And as for the tomatoes, uh, I don't know. I'll harvest a few more. The wind is finally letting up, and we've got a waxing beaver moon tonight next to a planet. I didn't check what planet it was, but the moon and a planet. I'll check on that, and we'll come back out the door one more time before we're done. I think this week Steve is a little under the weather, chomping on some grass right now. Something going on. I was about to go in and check on the uh, planet next to the moon, but then Steve got up here, so that's a cuteness alert. And of course he leaves. And I wanted to get him next to the boat and the city of Boston. Got a Mitt sighting. I just looked up. It's Saturn, similar color to you, Mitt, that is adjacent to the moon, to the east of Pisces in the southeastern sky this evening. Can you see it yet, Steve? Uh, moon is behind those trees. I think we can catch it though. This is just a rental, Sterling. Just test driving it. And it's a good thing uh, the Atlanta kicker wasn't as good at putting it through the uprights as Mother Nature is putting the sun through the uprights here in Weymouth. <laughs> and the Four River Bridge, a Halloween thing. We still get some boating. Let's chase that boat over there and try and get between the uprights ourselves and see if we can see the moon between those uprights real quick. Put TK through the uprights here. <laughs> it's uh, 4.30, sunset's 4.35, 50 degrees here. All right, so the sun's down. Now I'm not sure where I'm going. I don't think I can sneak in behind those oil tanks, but maybe down a road over there. Look at the uprights from the other angle. Avalon Beach, Quincy Parks. I don't think I've ever been here before. Gotta go outside, in memory of Tom Murray, friend to the neighborhood, September. What do we got down here? Ugh. Where are the uprights? Oh, they're way over there. Oh, someone's making a fire on the beach. All right, so I'm not gonna get it through the uprights here. Uh, the uprights being right there. Look at the size of these tracks coming up from the water. I have big hands. <sighs> Wow, <laughs> what are they? Who knows? You know, down at the Avalon Park in Quincy. There's some big birds walking around. Maybe some last to the heron. I did see a heron this week. I didn't think they were still here, but maybe they are. Gorgeous moonrise here over Twin Rivers technology. What are they making there? I don't even know. It's a cold night. Wind's letting up. Maybe the tomatoes survive the night. Appreciate all your comments. I'll try and give you some more answers to your questions this week. The week of the full beaver moon. Thanks for watching. Talk to you on our Tuesdays are good if you can get them. Good for Bombo Genesis. Winter is coming.